Hi there, and welcome to this video where we'll be looking in detail at the Enger section one and how to do your best on this part of the exam. So the format of the Enger section one is a multiple choice exam split into two parts, part A and part B. Each part is testing slightly different things, but they each have 20 questions and you'll have 60 minutes to complete the whole of section one. The questions are all multiple choice and you'll have options from A to E for every question. Each question is worth one mark and there's no negative marking so you won't be marked down if you get one of them wrong, you just gain marks for a right answer. You'll be given a question paper and you'll also be given an answer sheet and you can fill out your answers on the answer sheet with a HB pencil. If you need to do any working out, you can write that on the question paper. Let's take a look at the syllabus for the two parts. Starting with part A, this is a test of standard maths and physics topics. You'll likely be familiar with these from your past studies. So for the maths topics in part A, you'll cover things including units, number, ratio and proportion, algebra, geometry, probability and statistics, all at a standard level. The part A physics topics will include electricity, magnetism, mechanics, thermal physics, matter, waves, and radioactivity. Now, looking at part B, this is testing maths and physics at an advanced level, and it also assumes knowledge of all those topics from part A. So in terms of the advanced maths topics, this includes algebra and functions, sequences and series, coordinate geometry in the XY plane, trigonometry, exponentials and logarithms, differentiation, integration, and graphs of functions. The Part B advanced physics topics include forces and equilibrium, kinematics, Newton's laws, momentum, energy, materials, waves, and electricity. Now, there's obviously a lot more detail to the syllabus than I can go into in this video, so I'll put the link to the syllabus in the description and you can check out exactly what you need to know for this exam as it goes into much more detail and I'd really recommend having a look at that. It's likely that a lot of the specification content will be familiar to you, for example from your GCSE or A-level studies of maths and physics, but it's important to remember that even if you're familiar with the content, you still need to prepare for this part of the exam. Exam. On top of an understanding of the syllabus, you need to have fast and accurate mental math skills as well as good exam technique. You've got to answer 40 questions in 60 minutes and that works out to about a minute and a half per question. This really demonstrates the need for speed and for exam technique because you really don't have long to answer these questions so you want to be doing it as quickly as possible. It's also important to remember that everyone who is taking this test is applying for engineering at Cambridge and so they're all going to be very very good at maths and at physics. So just being good at maths and physics is not enough to succeed in this test. You also need to have excellent exam technique and that's where the practice and preparation really comes in. Practice is going to help you develop efficient strategies to succeed in section one. So you might be able to spot certain types of question that come up year on year. You might spot questions where you know that drawing a diagram might help you, or you might see other questions where the same method tends to apply to that specific type of question. So if you can get these strategies in place through doing practice papers, you'll have a much easier time when it comes to sitting the real exam and you'll be much more efficient. Another great strategy is using the process of elimination. Practice will help you spot immediately which answers just look wrong and you can eliminate these and take down the number of options you've got left. This can be helpful if you find yourself at any point running out of time or not quite sure how to get to the answer because it means your guess has a higher probability of being right if you can eliminate those wrong answers straight away. So the key things to do to succeed in section one is to first review the syllabus and make sure you're happy with all the topics on there and do any revision you might need to do. Then you can start doing practice papers. You should do these in time conditions and when you've finished, review your answers. Have a look at what you got wrong and think about why you got it wrong. And then have a look at the kinds of questions you tend to get wrong. Are there any patterns in the kind of mistakes you can make? You can then use this to do more targeted practice and focus on those things that you tend to struggle with. And this will help you build up much better skills to do well in the real thing. 
it's important you start practicing in plenty of time before the test because this isn't the kind of thing you can just cram overnight. Even if you manage to learn all the physics and maths content you could need the night before the exam, you won't have had that practice at the exam technique, which is one of the most important things here. The exam technique needed is a skill and skills take time to develop. So you need to give yourself that time by practicing regularly and starting as early as you can. So that's the end of this video. If you check out the Oxbridge Mind channel, we've also got videos about the other sections of the test. So have a look at those as well. Thank you for watching.